Lord God, thank you so very much for this opportunity we have to be together. We ask your blessing on this time that we might come to a fuller and richer understanding of the prophets. Uh, we also pray, Lord, that you will speak those prophetic words to us uh, in our time so that we might live out your holy word through the everyday of our lives. We pray this all in the name of our Savior Jesus and all the good people of God said, Amen. 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 All right, well, we're continuing on our series, uh, eight parts, going through different aspects of the Bible and coming to uh, better understandings of these different portions of the Bible. And, uh, and so tonight we're talking about the Bible prophecies. And uh, so the, the books of the prophets, uh, quite frankly, these can be very confusing at times. And so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the, the, the basic things you need to know that will help you in terms of reading the prophets. Um, also, uh, some of the basic aspects about, the, um, uh, about uh, approaching the prophets from our own time frame. But I'd like to begin by giving you an example of what prophetic speech is like. Um, we're going to be reading from scripture, but uh, I want to give you kind of a modern day example. And so um, I'm going to play a video for you here. And this is from the 2006 National Prayer Breakfast. Um, the sound is from that prayer breakfast, and then there's someone on the internet that's put pictures to match what's being said uh, in that, uh, in, at that prayer breakfast. So I'll just go ahead and kick that off for you as our introduction. God may well be with us in our mansions on a hill. I hope so. He may, will, he may well be with us in all... Uh, in approaching. 
approaching the Bible prophecies, the books of the prophets in the Old Testament. The first of which is the situation. Um, prophets wrote during about a 200 year period, uh, from 760 B.C. to 560 B.C., as Israel, which is the northern kingdom, and Judah, which was the southern kingdom during this time period, fell to uh, foreign powers, experienced exile, and then recovered. They go through these three stages. They're, they're aligning themselves with foreign powers and um, eventually fall to them. And then they are out experiencing exile, uh, being pulled out of their, their homeland um, to live amongst uh, Assyrians, Babylonians. And then, uh, eventually, they get to return. And the words of the prophets are there through this whole 200-year process that they go through of, of going um, from what seems like independence to dependence to being conquered, to then being set free back into the land to practice their faith. That's the situation that these prophets are writing in. And, um, and knowing which stage they're at when you're reading a certain prophet can enlighten what they're talking about. The earlier prophets, they're trying to give warnings. If we keep on this path, uh, we're going to fall. And then the ones when they're in exile, alright, how do we live when we're no longer in the promised land? And how do we continue to keep our faith when surrounded um, by other faiths? Um, when we look out our windows, we no longer see the promised land. Now we see Babylon. How do we handle that? The problem, the problem that they are primarily addressing in the prophets is that the leaders of God's people were relying on their alliances with foreign powers. Um, and the, and their um, engaging in, the, in those foreign cultures that appeasing those pagan gods, saying, well, maybe it wouldn't hurt to also worship this other god, uh, Baal, um, and, uh, and make the sacrifices there as well. It'll keep those folks that we've made alliances with happy, and um, then eventually, you know, when they take over, well, it'll keep the authorities off our back if we just participate in their religion, and who knows, maybe this is a better god than our god. And there's a real problem with that. Also, throughout this whole time, um, they're identifying issues with dishonesty, greed, and corrupt business practices. Thank goodness we don't have that anymore. Uh, so we can just ignore all those words in the prophets about dishonesty and corruption within business practices. There actually uh, were cases, and, and we'll read about one of those when we go through this, uh, a scripture example later, where um, they had two different sets of measurements. When they were buying something from you, and they wanted to measure how much it was, they had one set of weights to figure out the balance. So you had to put a lot more on than you really should. And then, and then when they were going to um, sell something to you, well, then it, was, it would be something much lighter would, would make up the difference. And archaeologists have actually found merchants' um, belongings and finding two sets of weights. And although they're marked the same, you'll notice that one is a lot different than the other. And so a lot of times they'll talk about the use of unfair weights uh, in, in prophecies. Because that was just, that was the epitome of what was going wrong in their society. They were um, cheating the poor out of money to get rich off of them. Um, and, and that just threw right in the face of the Torah, of the law of God. And so um, that was just really a pet peeve of the prophets. Now, the message is the third thing you need to know. The message is that these prophets were pointing out what was wrong, explaining the consequences, and then directing the people back into the good graces of God, into following the law. This is the, basically the three messages. Here's what we're doing wrong. Here's what's going to be the consequences of that. And here's how we need to get back. And this is what God's going to do in terms of restoring us. And God is actually going to heal this. He's just asking that you fall in line again. Okay? Now along the way, there's a story of what happens when we fall away and then God brings a spirit of restoration and gives us deliverance from our sins. That's a great story that's being told and it's no coincidence that those same prophecies are working when Jesus comes. And so God uses those prophecies about what they were going through hundreds of years before to illustrate that this Jesus that I've sent is that same type of deliverance. God likes to use recurring themes, likes to use recurring messages. So 
you realize these prophecies were written five to seven hundred years before Jesus ever shows up. And it wasn't just, hey folks, there's going to be this guy coming, his name will be Jesus, and this is what it's going to be like, and that they waited for 700 years for that to happen. They were writing about things that were going on at their present time. They were proclaiming the problems of their present time, and the consequences, and how God would restore things and make them new. So when the people of God get themselves in a mess again, they can go back to the words of the prophets, and see what God will do with that. And sure enough, in the time of Jesus, he did that full sacrifice and that, that, that full accounting for it and that full restoration. Which is why the message can still speak to us today because when we find ourselves falling away, the message of the prophets calls us back too and lets us know what God might do, even with us. The last thing is the source. The prophets are not just political commentators or social activists. The idea of, of the words of the prophets in Scripture is that God has given a specific word to this prophet to tell the people. That God has instructed this person to deliver a message to the powers that be from God. So we may say that, well, we have prophets in our own time. And, and you can speak prophetically, like in the example that we heard at the beginning of this uh, in the video. But the, the biblical definition of a prophet is that the source is God. You've been given this message from God. It's not that you've just sat there and thought, eh, we really shouldn't be doing that. That's a bad thing. My opinion is that's a bad thing. It doesn't make you a, a prophet in the biblical sense. And so the source is all important. So a lot of the uh, prophets will spend in a, a huge chunk of time in the beginning telling you the story of how this prophet was called by God. It basically, it's giving the prophet credentials. Hey, I didn't just make this stuff up. I actually got a call from God. Here's what happened. I got called before the heavenly throne, and there were angels there, and they were singing, and all this stuff. And I said, I'm not worthy, and hot coal got picked up and put on my lips, and I was cleaned of all my sins, and then I was asked if I take the message, and I said, here I am, Lord. That's Isaiah. And, and, and each prophet has a little, little story like that. Sometimes you get a good full narrative, sometimes they just rip right into the message. But often the call is, is there to make you really understand where it's coming from. So the four things, again, the situation, you've got this alignment with other powers other than God, you've got being sent out into exile, and then you've got coming back into the land. You've got the problem. The problem are these relationships that's dependent upon other powers other than God, this, this going ahead and following the pagan rituals of the cultures, and going along with the culture around them. You've got the message, which is, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what's going to happen if you keep it up. And okay, this is how you're going to get back in good graces. Sounds like a good parenting kind of routine, right? It's what you're doing wrong. You keep that up, this is what's going to happen. All right, now that we've had that and punishment has come, this is how we're going to make things better. All right? And then um, the source. And those four things, knowing those four things changes it. Because sometimes you're reading some of these things and you're like, what are they talking about? <laughs> and, um, and throughout the prophets, they're, they're talking about these political and social situations that are going on. And... Um, and it can get confusing if you don't know the history. So, that's why study Bibles are really awesome. <laughs> because you get a study Bible, and, and then right before you get to a prophet, it'll tell you what was the situation. What was going on when this prophet wrote. And then often when you're reading the verse, down below the little notes, it'll tell you, well, this is what it's talking about here. And so, um, anyway, uh, I, I just really encourage you to study Bibles um, uh, for that. Or call up your pastor. <laughs> Um, I want to start engaging us, and, and the, the questions in the middle of the sheet here is, um, we generally don't like prophets. We don't like prophets. Why do you think that is? Why do you think we don't like prophets? Too many false prophets. Too many false prophets. So we don't know who to follow and who not to follow. It gets a little confusing. What else? What else? Why don't we like prophets? We don't like what they have to say sometimes. We're like teenagers with parents. The 
people of God are like teenagers with, and with a, a, a God as parent. We are sure we know everything. And we just know that God is just out of touch with what's going on now. And, you know, maybe that applied back in the day. But nowadays, you really just, it really needs to go this way. And this prophet, maybe, you know, you don't really know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. The prophets call us to honest reflections on our faithfulness and on God's faithfulness. And God comes out smelling like roses and we come out smelling like... Okay. So, think about this question. If, if God, and this is on your sheet, if God were calling a prophet to our community, right here, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Here comes the prophet from God. What word from God would that prophet bring? How would that prophet point out our hypocrisy, our lack of faith, our dependence on other powers? How would that prophet point out the consequences of our actions? And how would that prophet direct us back into faithfulness? I just want you to hang on those questions a little bit. We're going to talk about that, but just let that hang in your mind as we dig into some prophets. So to get us started, we're going to take a look at two examples from the prophets, and then we'll work together on seeing our community to the eyes of the prophet. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to the other side and go through some scripture in a group discussion. 